Welcome everyone to today's video with the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Elvira Boulay. And in today's video, we're going to talk about how to prepare for an exam, a concert, or any other performance. Now, we're nearing the end of the season and all our students are preparing for their final concert. Probably a lot of you are preparing for exams or concerts as well. And that's why we wanted to give you in this video three very useful tips that will help you prepare and feel good, play good on stage. Sometimes you perform really well on stage and you're very happy. And sometimes you play really bad and you feel terrible on stage. And sometimes that might feel like it's totally random and not in your control. But that's not true. You can do a lot of things in order to perform really well and to feel very good on stage. And we're going to run through those things now. Now, before we move on with the video, for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, please do so because you help our channel grow. Let's get into the three tips. So the first thing that you have to do if you want to play well on stage is don't start preparing too late. And I'll be honest with you, I was definitely very guilty of this for a very long time. Uh, up until I was professional actually for, for quite a while. So, and I know that it's a mistake that you out there make all the time. You just think that it's enough to start practicing the day of the concert a little extra. Don't do that. I'll give you an indication. I think that if Before you have- Before you give them an indication, I have to also say that I've had, even as a professional, I've had times that I really didn't prepare and it, and it feels awful. Starting too late or not practicing enough, it just doesn't feel good on stage. So I would give an indication if you're a beginner and you have a very short piece to perform, I would say start preparing two or three weeks before your concert. If you're an intermediate student and you have an intermediate piece, I would say start at least six weeks before your concert, start preparing. If you have a difficult piece and you're a more advanced player, start preparing three to six months before your concert. And for us professionals, I would say that we prepare usually in a serious concert up to six months to one year before our concert. So don't underestimate, don't think you can just start the day before with a little bit of extra practice. That is just rule number one. You want to feel good on stage, prepare absolutely on time. And just a little extra tip, make sure that you are 100% done Nothing more needs to be practiced, nothing more needs to be finished, nothing new needs to be done one week before your exam or your concert. Even if your teacher calls you and says the exam or the concert has been uh, moved up one week, you, you say, no panic, I'm ready. That's, I think, the, the stage of readiness you have to be in. Tip number two, make sure that you have good focus and make sure that you fix your mistakes while you're practicing. That's very important and I'll explain why. Always, always your playing will always reflect the way you practice. So for example, when we hear somebody play for us, we know how this person practices. When you go and play an exam, that's going to reflect the way you practiced before. So it's always, there is always going to be a connection between your practice and the way that you play. We often hear people say, well, at home I'm playing absolutely great, everything is perfect, but here it's a disaster. There is no such a thing, there is not such a big difference between at home being really amazing and at the lesson or at the exam being an absolute disaster. That's impossible. Yes, there is always going to be some difference between the way you play for yourself and the way you play for your teacher or for the exam, but it's never going to be such a huge difference unless your practice at home was really not good. Now I mentioned focus. Remember that if you are practicing and if you're thinking about other things, other pieces, doesn't matter. If your mind is somewhere else, Keep in mind that when you play at an exam, because an exam is something very, kind of the feeling there is not really inspiring. You're going there to be judged. And so if something happens during the exam, you're practicing and suddenly you have a blackout, you will not be able to recover easily because during your practice, your mind was somewhere else. So you're not trained to remain focused at the task at hand. You're not trained well enough to be playing the piece from the beginning till the end without any problems. So focus is extremely important if you want to feel stable whenever you're performing for somebody. And so if you catch yourself during your practice that your mind is somewhere else and you're not being really focused, what would be even better is to stop 
with your practice, go do something else, drink a cup of coffee, drink some water, I don't know, whatever it is you do, do something else, some other type of work, and then come back at the piano and practice again so you can be present during your practice session. I also mentioned fixing mistakes. It's absolutely the same story. If you are practicing at home and you are allowing yourself to play wrong notes, then when you play for me, if I'm your teacher, right, or if you play for your teacher at the exam, the chances are, chances are that you are going to have many, many more wrong notes. There are people who really thrive playing for somebody else at concerts, at exams, for, for their teachers, but there are also people who close up. Not everybody really blooms on stage, but that's not really a problem if you're prepared well. And so when you are practicing at home, if you notice that you are having sloppy passages, wrong notes, some mistakes, memory slips, make sure that you fix those because then you ensure that at the exam, when you're feeling tension, when you're feeling pressure, when you're feeling uncomfortable, that you will be able to rely on something that you've done at home earlier. The bottom line here is that there is always going to be some difference between how you feel at home and how you feel at an exam. But if you want to make that difference, the difference between at home and at the exam smaller, all you have to do is apply what we're telling you and you will see that the difference isn't going to be big and you will feel quite satisfied and of course you're going to take your exams. So and the final way to make the difference between playing at home and playing at a concert or an exam smaller, the final step would be to organize one or more practice concerts or exams. So depending on what uh, on what you're preparing for, be it a concert or an exam, try to recreate that um, atmosphere before the actual exam. So call up your friends or call up your family and ask them to sit and to applaud. Uh, you practice coming, coming to the stage, you practice bowing, and you also practice, you have to take it really seriously, you practice not talking, not joking, you have to really recreate that atmosphere. They could even and take uh, the friends, your friends can take pen, pen and paper, like exactly like the members of the jury are going to stay behind uh, the tables and they're going to take notes. Your friends can do the same, you can even ask them, can you just not only listen but write down a few things that, that you think or make up some stuff that, that you think that I could be working on and I could be improving. So you really feel judged mm -hmm. at that, at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Because exam is about that. They're not sitting there just to admire your beautiful eyes. Absolutely. So try to recreate that specific atmosphere. And I think that asking your friends to actually write physically things down is a great tip. Because I know that in one of my first exams in the conservatory, the fact that I heard a pen writing and I didn't know if it, they were writing something positive or something negative just sent me in a total panic because when you're on stage you can hear those things. You can hear people whispering or writing uh, and, and that is... Yeah, they might really... even whisper something. I, I've actually heard that. Yeah, absolutely. So try to recreate that atmosphere because that is something you're not used to and you don't know how you'll react to that and if you've prepared yourself at least you kind of know what you're getting into and it will make you much more stable on the actual event. And of course, something very easy you can do is also take your phone and record yourself. Of course, that doesn't recreate that specific feeling of somebody physically listening to you, but still it's better than nothing. So just with that, with Elvira's idea, you can think of other things you can do to recreate as much as possible the atmosphere of having to play and having to perform the, the piece from beginning till the end without nothing happening, with you being able to handle everything very well. And recording yourself is generally a good, a great idea, actually. We have a video on it, so just check it out here if you haven't seen it yet. And one final thing before we close the video, we made this video for people who prepare for concerts and exams, but it's common sense that if you apply all those things on day-to-day -day basis in your practice, you are going to improve enormously. So it doesn't matter that you don't play, that you don't take exams. It doesn't matter if you're a person who never wants to play at concerts to perform for other people. If you apply those three tips we gave you, you are going to improve enormously.
Anyway, this is all we want to talk to you about in this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. You support us enormously by subscribing. And um, if you have any questions about this subject, about any other subject, anything that's important to you, as always, don't hesitate to contact us down below in the comments. And to all those of you who are taking an exam or giving a concert, we wish you good luck and have fun. See you next time. Let's get into the three... Once more, let's get into the three... Let's get into the three tips. But that's not true. With these three tips... I'm no <laughs> so confused! Tip number two. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> fix your mistakes and what? Tip number two. Fix your mistakes and what? <laughs> and focus. <laughs>